All right, welcome to Two Sons Podcast. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Well, it turns out, uh, I know, shocking development. There was more to the story than what happened at the beginning of The Acolyte. That yeah. super convoluted episode three, where we go back 16 years into the past. We learn the other half of the story tonight. And uh, I, this is the one thing I'm going to say. Torben, like, I get it why he wanted to take the Barash vow. It's yeah, like, he you know kind what? of... Uh... He effed the pooch on that one, I yeah, think, is is what we'd say. Mm -hmm. I he, think he's, like, so likable and unlikable. It's so odd. Like, one second, he's just being a super rash like teenager, and then the next, he's just going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Wookiee. Yeah. That's possessed. Yeah, you and know? blocking arrows and stuff. Yeah, yeah like, like, he did a good job fighting, but he's just kind of a big idiot. It's interesting because, like, I remember um, – I mean, they. We. This is a. This is a thing that they do in Star Wars. Like, uh, if any of you guys, when we were kids, I used to read these books a lot. The kid, the the books where it's like, it's Obi Wan and Anakin going on missions together, or it's Qui Gon and Obi Wan going on missions together. They're like the master apprentice relationship. They do a lot of field work together. Right. But like uh, the first thing I thought when I saw that I was uh, I was like here are the downsides <laughs> of like doing field work with the oh kid. Oh my gosh, could you imagine? <laughs> He'd be so bored. They're out there for like seven weeks, is yeah. what he said. Yeah. Seven weeks is really not that long. Like seven months, I could start to see him acting like that. Mm -hmm. But dude, you got to hold it together for seven weeks. You're a Jedi. Well, and again, act like, like, this like is it. The job. Yeah, this, this is, is the, the job. job. You got to collect your moss. But you got to put in your dues. Exactly. You, it, it, if you're, I mean, you're giving up a lot of stuff to be a Jedi. Okay. Yeah. Like, part yeah, of I know. It's like you don't just get to be home all. <laughs> The time I know. Either. You're already giving up <laughs> way too much to complain about having to collect moss on so, Brendock. So if you're going to fuck up royally the way that he did, I think that taking the brash vow is kind of a nice way out. Like, yeah, dude. What if I just never had to talk about this with anybody? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. like, tell me about that business. Uh, what was the name of the planet again? Brendock. Tell me about Brendock. the business on Brendock. Like, yeah, it's, it's got Sorry. really messed up really fast, mm. and I'm in a trance. <laughs> brash vow. Dude, and there's, I wonder, I'm, I'm curious to see, because uh, there's, a, I just finished the other High Republic book. By oh, way. really? Yeah, I'll, I'll share some thoughts on that later. But like the, uh, in that book, there's actually mention specifically uh, of, a, of a Jedi by the name of Barash. Huh. And I wonder if that the Barash vow is something that like is relatively new. Oh, I, I, but I haven't actually done that. Oh, like it's the new that. thing that Jedi do when they hate their lives. Yeah, when it's like when you screw oh, like up, Jedi like Barash a did it a couple months ago. I think I might try it. One of those. <laughs> I I don't know that for sure. All I know is when I was listening to my audiobook the other day, I'm like, hmm, Barash. That sounds Barash, that sounds interesting. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So the gist of it is, and what I found was really fascinating, and you, you pointed this out in uh, as we were watching. My wife Carly went over and, and I know. sat Jeep Thank for a you, while. Carly. Yeah, yeah now watching Elena's my child. And she's doing yeah, it. yeah. Uh -huh. and we're uh, we're sitting down. And you I go, abandoned my child for this. <laughs> <laughs> we had to beg him. Like Luke was like, "I'll come over when Elena gets home." I'm like, "Dude, like Carly can help. Like she's we're a team. This is a two sons podcast. It's two sons, team, yeah, okay? team Our of four. Yeah." So, uh, and Carly, of course, was willing to step in, and, and she gets to hang out with her little, you know, know. nephew for a little. I know. Bit. He's so, a good guy. So he's a good guy. So uh, he's entering his toddler phase. Oh, it's full yes. on. It's happening. Yes. You got your hands full, man. Big wants little brain. <laughs> he's there. So, uh, you pointed out rightly that the Jedi made the right call in that situation. Right. Yeah, they literally thought that Osha and May were in danger. And it was interesting how it was filmed because from Soul's point of view, you could see that. Like, Mother Coral always was coming in hot with the girls. Like, she was always pretty intense. And then even Mother Anisea, uh was essentially, like, forcing the girls to fight back with mm. her. And that's not a good... The, the optics were bad, let's mm. just say that. And Soul, Soul was trying to do the right thing for the most part. Yeah, you, well, and what you pointed out, like, as you pointed out, like, the specific things that Soul were, was seeing were kind mm. of violent. Yeah. Or, like, negative. Pretty hardcore. Soul was not seeing the heart-to-heart -heart con uh, uh, conversations. Like, the first he heard of that was after he stabbed Mother Anisea. Yeah, I know. And then he's like, oh, Ooh. Anisea's actually pretty pretty nice yeah, pretty for chill. the most part. Even though she did essentially brain control Torben, mm. which we'll, we'll get into later. Yeah, right? I, and I do want to get into that because I do, I do yeah. find that fascinating. But one, one of the things that... Um, 
uh, that you said that also I thought was fascinating was specifically when when Master Indara contacted the Jedi Council. The mm-hmm. Jedi Council said, "Leave the girls." Right. Like they're like, "Leave yeah. the girls." Not a good look. Continue your mission. Like this is like, do not mess with the Coven. Like do not. And probably because Master Yoda and all of the the Jedi that are on the Council were probably looking at the situation like this is going to end badly. Right. Like, these these witches are not going to let you just take them. Jedi are going to die. Like. We don't know any more about this. Just keep researching the virgins thing, yes. and we'll figure this out in the long run. And, and long story mm-hmm. short, that's why the council exists is yeah. to help make really tough decisions. Some of the um, some of the the qualms with the early episodes this season was people were mad. They're like, they're making the Jedi look so bad. And it's like I get that the Jedi did look bad early on, mm-hmm. but it's cool to get a backstory and see that it really wasn't as bad as we thought. Well, and one of the things that you talked about also, uh, you were making all these good points while we were watching, but one of the other things Thanks, you Jay. said is like, yeah, exactly. This is Luke really is nice. extremely observant. Yeah, I'm just uh, really on ball. <laughs> so one of the things you said that I thought was interesting too is you were like, you were like, this episode is showing a lot of like Jedi frailty and you didn't you didn't actually use that word oh the casualties yeah like, or the casualness of, of the casual jedi. behavior yeah, yeah. of mm-hmm. jedi like and that actually came to an even more aggressive version of it at the end of the episode when soul tried to walk away from indara and indara grabbed him right and they kind of got in each other's face like mm-hmm. which is the the kind of the point here which is like no matter what whether or not you're a jedi like you still have the same strengths and weaknesses right. that all humans deal with, with their emotions and, and all that kind of stuff. And like, yeah. you saw that at the beginning as they're disagreeing and they're working through conflict. And like, obviously Torben is like obsessed with <laughs> uh, wanting to go home. Master soul is like obsessed with getting a Padawan, which he hasn't been able to get to right. this point. Right. You know? Well, while we're throwing out compliments, Jason, Tim, um, you were also talking about how the fact that they just kind of casually mentioned sacrifice when they're talking yeah. to Osha and how Sol and Indara are like kind of look at each other and like, did this kid just say sacrifice mm-hmm. when they were talking about like witch rituals? Like maybe we should save these girls. So again, the optics are completely different this episode. I'm still not even sure like what all was entailed with the ascension because mm-hmm. Mother Coral and the other witches were making other mentions about how like the girls were our future and blah, blah, right. blah. And it's like, well, Whatever okay, you're not means. having more kids. So like, or at least to our knowledge. And so like these two, it's, it's not like you're just gonna have a two witch coven in the future. So like, what are you gonna do with these right. girls? Like it was, and then Master Indara presents a simple question. Like, uh, uh, like, like, how are you gonna lead? You're not there yet. Like, why are they right. doing this ascension ceremony when you're so young? Like there are su- substantial question marks mm-hmm. as to like what else is kind of entailed with that. And I'm not even sure we're going to find out in this season. I was just about to say that. But the point is, is like, I think they did a good enough job establishing enough of a gray area. Correct. And like, as much as Mother Anasea was peaceful and wanted to give Osha, all of the other witches were like, no. Yeah, no way, Jose. Starting with Coral. Mm. Coral kind of started that. She she essentially lit an open flame around gasoline. Yeah. Is what she did. Like, Osha's like, or May is like super worked up, and then she's like, "You got to get angry," and then she gets she gets Dude. May into this fit, and then May runs up to try and talk with Osha, right? And then that's the big change. That I think that is like the big piece that we learned this evening is when May lights the the book on fire, it's because she's full of emotion, right? She sees the Jedi symbol that Osha had drawn. And she's like, I'm burning this book. Mm-hmm. This this book is trash. They're going to steal my sister, right? Like, I, I could see where she's coming from. She totally did not intend to light their entire, you know, home on fire, essentially, right? No, well, like, the, you saw her try to stop the fire out. And, right. like, you know, and obviously the fire itself, in terms of the stone fire, you know what I actually started to think about? Like... I don't even look at it as like the building itself burned. Right. She dropped basically a giant thing of like fuel. Yeah. On an electrical panel. Right. And those electrical panels are basically like a network that runs through the entire building. Right. And it made its way, the fire somehow made its way to the core. Right. Where like there's the like power a generator or something. And the power generators blew up. Exactly. Like, I did, that, that, like, and again, like this was one of the things that Luke and I were saying, like right after that episode three, we were like, this is a little weird. This doesn't make sense. The song is bizarre. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of stuff here that we're yeah, not. We like, will continue. Okay. We'll just say it now. Cor- Mother Coral is kind of distracting yeah. with her deliveries. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like we, <laughs> There's no getting around that, but it takes wasn't... a long time to say like four letter words. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, and she's just like really like. There's a lot of pressure behind her lips when yeah, she talks. She, I don't yeah, know what it's it just is. Kind like... of intense. Yeah, <laughs> but, there, there, it's not. It's, it's not all perfect. But like yeah. one of the things we said after episode three is like, let's give 
Leslie Headland a chance to tell her story. Right. And like, here we are seven episodes into this thing. And like stuff is starting to kind of tie yeah. together and make some sense. One of the things that I thought was fascinating about the mother coral piece and I'm really curious to see how this like develops in the long run because there are a lot of people who think Mother Coral might be the Sith. Mm. I don't think she is for a bunch of reasons. One, Agreed. I mean, the uh, like you had just hinted at it. I don't think the actress has like the the the, the, gumption. the juice for it. Like, yeah, yeah. There's a there's a certain amount of juice that like she's got a lot of juice. She just has the wrong juice. <laughs> <laughs> like. <laughs> the delivery is just not there yeah, for exactly. her to be a Sith. But I, but like that also, like she straight up was trying to fight Soul, and like literally, yeah. and Soul's just like, yeah, you know, like and, and good guy Soul, like he was essentially forced to kill Mother Anasea because mm-hmm. he thought that she was going to do some crazy like bewitching. I don't even know. What and call Mother Anasea like, very well might have done that to yeah. kill Naka the same way that she, true, yeah. true. And he was essentially his hand was mm-hmm. forced, right? But then it was very clear that still, even though he had just started hand-to-hand combat, he, like, didn't want to continue. Yeah. He was, like, mm-hmm. essentially forced into it. Mm-hmm. For sure. And, like, one of the things that I, I, I thought was really fascinating about the Mother Coral piece of it, even though I don't think she's the Sith, there is something to be said about, like, what you mentioned, which is, like, the putting the gasoline on the fire thing. She was absolutely stoking up the anger and the hate that was in May. For sure. Which is a very much like I don't know about you, but like I I think that though this particular coven while while tapping into the dark side of the force, and this is one of the things too that I think is fascinating from the standpoint of of uh what the Sith was talking about, what our the stranger was talking about. Mm-hmm. Semantics. Like it why is semantics. Is it called, and th- this is where it's like Take if we stop sisters. thinking about dark side and light side and we start thinking more about like them just being two completely different ways to tap in the force that come with different strengths and weaknesses. And obviously there are these two entities, the Jedi and the Sith, that tie into them in like in, in a very, very like uh like it, it's it's just they have a very one like a, a one dimensional look at it, right. right? Both of them do. And I think one of the things that this coven really ties into, and I think we got this in episode three, they are tapping into the dark side of the force, but they're doing it in a way that is like not essential dark. Right. It doesn't have like an evil tinge to it. Agreed. It's kind of like the, 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 the Skywalkers for the Chiss. They're tying into the light side of the force, but mm. it's not like they're being Jedi. They're oh, just yeah. tying into the light side of the force. And so my point is, is like, I think Mother Coral really driving at the anger and the hate was weird. Mm-hmm. And I do wonder if there was some more Sith manipulation on that situation just in general because like it didn't strike me as like what Mother Anasea teaches. Correct. The difference between those two women was vast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. It was, very different it was approaches. Very, very different approaches. It, obviously in parenting and it seemed like in the way that they were using the Force. Now, they both did do that weird thing where they turned into like – that like smoke that smoke yeah and then they're about to do some crazy soul stuff. was like you're still right there though <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah i don't like that you're turning into smoke i'm gonna have to stab you in the chest that's essentially what happened i don't it's know like, what happens next with the smoke yeah, thing like this is usually not a good thing there was no smoke last time and torben like lost his mind so <laughs> yeah. like now what's gonna yeah, happen we're gonna shut this down <laughs> immediately yeah but no and and uh the way that the scene between Mother Anasea and Soul was portrayed was really cool. Yeah, I thought like it was mm. it was epic, and 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 the word epic is way overused in our society. Mm. But like, I'm gonna use it for that. Like, it was epic. I think mm. that's the first time I've ever used a word epic on, on the this spot. For, I first time for Luke. Epic. Like literally, like <laughs> look, we've been doing this for like well over a year now. I think that this is the first time we've used. I the word don't epic. use epic liberally. <laughs> yeah, I really don't. But I, I, I think that 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 scene between the two of them was really special. Yeah. It was super, super special. Well, and it's connected, I thought, to the moral fight because, like, mother coral fight, moral, moral coral, the uh, the moral coral fight because uh, I think Soul got scared shitless. Mm-hmm. Like, I think he killed NSA and then he immediately was like, "Oh no!" Yeah. And that was what held him back when Mother Coral was then attacking him a few seconds later. But right. one last thing to kind of hammer home the like there might be some influence of the dark side thing here. There are a couple things. One, we uh, of all of the loose ends they tied off in that episode, one of the ones they did not tie off was what happens with May when she runs back to the tree. Right. Two, the second piece of it is when Yord and Osha are running away from the Sith who's cutting down all the Jedi, Yord makes mention of the Sith getting into his head. And then, mm. and then Osha immediately says, "My mother oh, used to, yeah. my mother used to have that power." Interesting. And so that is 
interesting in the sense that like you wonder if there's more connection there. And that takes us to what I think is one of the biggest like force Star Wars plot points in this episode that's worth exploring, which is the concept of a virgence in the force. Yeah. And so the only thing we know Which is about new to it, me, right? I mean, are you were aware of a virgence prior to this? So when um when Qui-Gon is on Tatooine and he's hanging out with Padme, who's secretly being uh, disguised as a handmaiden at that mm-hmm. point. Um, which, by the way, I, I did not know this. Did you know the lady who played the queen when Padme was a handmaiden was Keira Knightley? No. That's Keira Knightley. It is? Yeah. The and also, dude, that was before she did Pirates of the Caribbean. So that's why like no one like... Interesting. Yeah. The, the chick from Bridesmaids is also one of the handmaidens. Are you serious? Yeah, one of the chicks. One of the chicks from Bridesmaids. I think Maid. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. She yeah. looks kind of like him, though. Like, yeah, that's the whole point. The whole they point kind of was look, like, yeah, they, exactly. Like, they, they all look, all look, look like alike. Bad so man. if one of them dies, you're like, which one died? We don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah, we're in a little bit of a rabbit hole here. Which yeah, we is are. my fault. But like, we're the, talking about bridesmaids so, somehow. So, we're yeah. breaking down. Great movie, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. it such a good Excellent movie. movie. Yeah. So uh, it's like so, the girl version of like the Hangover. Yeah, it is in the best way. So like when when um when Qui Gon is hanging out and he, I'm proud of you for bringing that back. I didn't know if you were going to be able to do it. Here we are. <laughs> so when Qui Gon's hanging out, he uh, he gets the the midi test, uh, and he he contacts Obi Wan, and he sticks mm-hmm. the little thing in the in the com uh, the com link, and he uh, contacts Obi Wan, and, and he right. and he straight up tells Obi Wan like I've encountered a virgin. Oh in the yeah, force. yeah, you're right. And he did say Obi Wan quest uh, responds and goes like and this virgins is centered around this boy hmm. like there's something like that but like they don't make uh i think they actually actually no no no. i think he might actually say that to the council i, I need to go back and re again i'm working yeah, through this, this just we like just you guys we episode. just watched the episode so like i need to go back and rewatch what happens in the phantom menace but oh qui-gon does make multiple references to the virgins that's now, a good point as we know this is what it, it, this is uh, follow me here for a second because I'm, I'm gonna give like my brief like kind of thought on what I think all of this means. So I just finished the latest uh, uh, High Republic book. I'm not going to get into too many details because I don't want to spoil it, not even just for Luke, which by the way, as much as I hated that book, it did have a good ending. Okay, the last, I'll have to the check last it out. couple chapters. Yeah, I'll good. start it tonight. You have yeah. to start it. I know. It's, We've got to break it down. Is, what are we going to talk about when Acolyte's over? Exactly. This is what I'm saying. So one of the things that happens in, uh, in this latest High Republic book is there's this blight that is going around. And as you can imagine, Markeon Rowe wants to get control of it, right? And that's the the gist of it. I'll, I'll give is it, there's a very epic finish to the movie that uh, that centers around the that, book. That, that or the book. Sorry, that you guys okay. need to check out. But and I'm a little annoyed because it's like the first episode. It's like now it's the nameless or the first book. It's book. the nameless, and the next book it's like now it's the Stormwall. It's like yeah. now it's the Blight. It's like it's like get can one, we just pick one? Can we just Markeon? pick one and yeah, like stick just, with it. Yeah, but anyway, he's angsty so, man. So That's there's the this style. Blight, and the Blight basically like spreads, and it has those of you guys who read the, the High Republic books. It's got a similar effect to the nameless, where it like kind of sucks the life out of everything hmm. and leaves it a gray chalky dusty nothingness right yeah and you say you mean planets it has the power to do it to entire planets okay and even further it doesn't it does it to everything like it literally spreads even over like inorganic material like it spreads over everything right so what's interesting about that is like we have a a mention from master indara at the beginning of the episode when they're explaining while they're why they are there torben's complaining he wants to go home, obviously. And one of the things Indara says is like a hundred years ago, there was a hyperspace disaster. That's referring to obviously the Hetzal, uh, the hero of Hetzal, Avar Chris, using mm-hmm. the. Uh, for those of you guys who haven't read the books, very briefly, yeah, the Nile, break it down. The Nile, like straight up, like we're at the beginning of this whole saga, was attacking hyperspace lanes. And one of the things they did is they like, uh put a blockage in a hyperspace lane that caused one of a pilot of a cargo ship to like pull out of the hyperspace lane, which caused like all of these like massive like meteors. Cause essentially there was all the these ship. particles of a large ship that were just, just shotgunning yes. through an entire system. Yeah. yeah. And so, and even if it's a small piece, if it's going hyper, like at the speed of light, essentially hyperspace, like it would destroy a planet, even if it was the size of like a nickel. Exactly. Essentially. Exactly. And so Avar Chris, who's one of the Jedi at this point in time, 
actually get, leads a band of Jedi to like m- slide through the Force one of these pieces to avoid hitting the planet Hetzal and saves trillion like a like saves billions of lives. Mm-hmm. But as we know, there's a chapter right after that where another chunk of it hits a different planet and kills like eight <laughs> billion people like that. Okay, <laughs> yeah. So there's a hyperspace disaster. That's the appearance of the Nile. It's this massive galactic conflict. We won't get into it. But there's this blight that's spreading, and the blight is literally removing pl- a life from planets. Mm. And one of the things that I thought was fascinating is Indara ma- makes mention of this planet was logged as lifeless. She yeah. straight up said that. This planet was logged as lifeless, and we see it as a green... It's thriving. Infested, it's More thriving. than thriving. It yes. looks like it's been healthy for forever. And yeah. so the way they paint this concept of the virgence of, in the Force is like basically a nexus of Force energy that has the power to create life. Yeah. Right? Do you think that that was the witches? Or do you think it was the actual planet or a combination of the two? I don't think we know yet. Okay. And I don't think we're supposed to. Right. I, I think it's I supposed mean, to be kind of vague. I think it could be anything. It could be the Sith could be behind it. Because to be clear, who was behind the Virgins and the Force that led to Anakin's conception? The, the Force Sith. was. Well, okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. But it was the balance. It was the natural balancing of the Force. But, but it was essentially the Sith's fault. The because point they is, had... is the Sith had created a Virgin surrounding uh, Abora, which was pa- Plagueis's like laboratory. Right. That was the name I couldn't remember the other night when we were talking. Uh, on the show, but like Abora was like a virgins in the force where Palpatine and Plagueis were creating life, yeah, which led to another virgins in the force popping up in the form right. of Anakin Skywalker. It was so powerful on the, the dark side that of the light side essentially created Anakin. And so, and so like basically, like this could this could be like a different type of that type of reaction from the force, but yeah. essentially, I, I'm I'm trying to interpret this as basically a spring of the force. Mm-hmm. Now, one of the things that's complicated, though, is like Mother Coral and Mother Anisea clearly had a more hands-on approach in this because they talk about how what we did. Yeah, and they created two children, which they might have sacrificed someone to do it is what it sounds like, too, because it was like one being split into two is is like almost what they were acting like. That whole thing was super confusing. Yeah. The way I interpret it is like they're not just twins biologically. They're also twins in the force. That was the way that that I kind of interpreted that. Um, uh, and, the, and it kind of makes sense with their little their little jib jab that they do, where they're like yeah. always one but born as two or whatever. Right. Uh, um, <clears throat> but anyway, I do think the Sith are going to be involved somehow. Uh-huh. The, between the comment from Yord, between the the dark side kind of talk from Mother yeah. Coral, between the Virgins and the Force piece, and how that has been connected to the Sith in the past. Like I am, I am, I'm generally of the opinion that the Sith are going to have a larger involvement in that. Yeah. But we may not find out. Dude, I think that there's a fair chance, and I wouldn't be surprised if this didn't happen. But I think that there's a fair chance that the stranger could be on the planet during all of this. Yeah. Watching it go down because because or you're his right. master. Yeah, or or his master. You're totally mm-hmm. right. Like, and and I don't know if from like a plot standpoint or from like a, uh, like I don't really know. What to, I don't know. It, it would be really cool to see when May goes to, I think it's called the Bunta tree. The Bunta tree, yeah. Mm. If the stranger's there. Mm. But I don't know if that would make sense, like visually speaking, from like a plot standpoint for a final episode, unless they want to get into flashbacks. And I, I feel like, I hope they don't get into a whole lot of flashbacks. Like, I hope that we're in the present again and, and kind of see this through. I think, the, I think the final episode is going to zero in on the final confrontation on uh, uh, my my hope that it's, um, what's the name of the planet with the... the uh, where Kalnaka was? No, the, the planet with the uh, with the Cortosis. Uh, oh, it was unnamed. No, I know, but what's our joking name oh, for based on um, Plagueis? Uh, it's, oh, dude, I can't I remember what, what it's it, called. Yeah, of course. Uh, Baldemnik. Baldemnik, yeah. 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 Baldemnik is, Gosh, is a tough. reference to the Plagueis book. So, uh, it's just, it was a, a, a rocky, like, kind of, like, continental planet next to the ocean that had a cave with Cortosis in it, which is exactly what happened in Darth Plagueis. Right. So, Anyway, the uh, small like, Nemnik. I think yes, yeah, small <laughs> Nemnik. Yeah, because we were joking about how uh, Disney is always like just changing, like Korriban to Moriban, and like that. And like I'm of the. I think uh, you read you read the uh, the Revan book, right? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I think I think they intend for um, Exegol to be Droman Kass. Like I, I think surprised. that I think yeah. that's because it's like this desert planet that's covered with lightning storms all the time. Yeah. Anyway, but. Um, when we were, when we were talking mm. about, uh, we were talking about that, that planet, I think that's where episode eight's going to take place. I think obviously soul and may are going to show up. I wouldn't be surprised if master, uh, um, 
In, uh, 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 more, no, like Rome. yeah, uh, Vernestra. Sorry, gosh, dude, we're struggling with names dude, today. Th- that's Master- what happens when this is live. I know. Yeah, no. Vernestra is. Don't Vernestra is. Uh, I think she's going to show up as well. But I don't know if she'll bring the whole army of Jedi. If she'll break off and go separately. Well, yeah, and we've got to see how this ends because, like, a- apparently the Sith are unknown, right? In yeah. Anakin's time timeline, mm-hmm. so. Like there's gonna be a lot, and Vernestra that goes lives down. a long time, and she's not alive at the time of the Phantom Menace. So yeah. who, the, who the hell knows where this is gonna go? Like I, I think now one of the things I, I sent Luke a couple of articles this week because uh, uh, um, Leslie Headland did a bunch of interviews after Episode Five for good reason. Episode Five was an absolute banger. Is an absolute banger. It was an absolute banger. Yeah, I've watched so it like good. four times already. So good. And it's my favorite piece of Star Wars content. Star Seeing Wars, a Disney Sith intentionally made. headbutt a lightsaber to to essentially disable it with Cortosis head. <laughs> Dude, it's the amazing. Thing. The, the dialogue the is amazing. Hand to hand combat. Like, it's yeah, just they, so, it was it was good. It was it's good. So 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 good. I I can't say enough about it. So she deservingly did a media tour after basically being like, I told you motherfuckers, I know what I'm doing. This is just awesome. Just wait until next week. Uh, yeah. Just the stone fire. You see this shit. Yeah. Yeah. You were talking shit about stone fire. Yeah. So, and not uh, everyone died from asphyxi- asphyxi- asphyxiation. Yeah. Why can't I say that word? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I, in that interview, she made a couple of specific mentions. There was, apparently she has confirmed in a conversation with someone that's like, corroborated that there will be a second Sith. We'll see if that ends up happening. That I mean, we're seven episodes in and there hasn't been a second Sith yet. Like there was a moment at the beginning of this episode where I thought it might be Mother Anasea, but I'm now convinced no, that's I don't not think the case. Is. And obviously, obviously she's she dead. She died. But like there uh but she made a specific mention of the fact that like this story of this show centers around the twins. So like mm. like because one of the specific questions was like are we going to find out more about the stranger and she said you will find out a little bit more about the stranger in episode six and in episode eight she specifically said a lot of oh. it she specifically said a lot of it you'll infer like so I, it's like kind of vague references it's good for podcasts yeah which is fine <laughs> yeah and like you know one of the, the actually uh not to go down another rabbit hole but like when I read the Rotten Tomatoes in, uh, reviews of mm-hmm. Acolyte right when it came out. One of the reviews, and I think I actually mentioned this in the in our first episode, but one of the things that one of the reviews said is like, you can tell in the show that the people who are making it are operating under substantial story constraints from mm-hmm. Disney. They actually said that. I know. Which, which do you is, feel like that? Yes, no? because we haven't heard anything tangible. Like, who is the stranger? Like, dude. Well, how would you feel if episode eight ended and we didn't find out who the stranger was? That would suck. That yeah, would suck. That would suck. Yeah. Like, I and, and that's, I'm dying to know more. About that him. might happen. Mm-hmm. We might not. We talked about the because he's, he's definitely on the map as like a, just a badass character. So yeah. much so that like Cybercraft, that that helmet company, is yeah, gonna, is, is doing pre-orders for for the stranger's helmet. Yeah, dude. One of the we're not sponsored. When by I them. rewatched that episode. The OSHA breathing in the mask when oh. you just barely see the lights through. The I bet slit. that's where it opens up, right? Dude, like that has be, to be where the next episode it's, opens it's, up. That is such a cool Star Wars moment because she's just breathing and it lasts for several seconds. She can't see anything. And you're anything. just sitting there and you're like, "What's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to happen?" But nothing. Like, <laughs> that, it, it, it's amazing. But like, we need to. We all need to, as Star Wars fans, like emotionally and mentally prepare ourselves for the fact that like Disney might not actually do anything. Like they might no like don't say that dude no they might I'm being serious like they might just be don't like say that, like man. OSHA and May this that like we don't yeah. find any more information we don't even know oh. who, the Darth title might never be used like like so, we don't know so like we because again like one of the things we talked about there's not enough planning that's been done and like I think when Dave Filoni takes a step away from this whole Thrawn universe and can actually devote his whole attention to this like I think he might be able to kind of tie all these so together. dude I have a take on that though because. To me, I see Dave's thumbprints, fingerprints all over the acolyte, like all over the acolyte, starting with the witches. Mm -hmm. And because, like, dude, Clone Wars and Rebels was very heavy into the sorcery side of of Star Wars that wasn't talked about in the George Lucas era, right? But it's still definitely a part of Star Wars. And I would. I would say it's a traditional part of Star Wars mm-hmm. at this point. Did so you this, like the part where with Indara talking about like the Night Sisters, how they don't train younglings and yeah, and, yeah, like that was yeah. kind of cool, right? It was. Yeah. So, so I felt Dave's thumbprint or fingerprints all over this is is what I thought. Like to me, this kind of felt like Rebels almost, yeah. in, in a in a weird way that I don't think I can explain 
yet. Mm. You know, so so I, I think we are in the depth era of, of yeah, the depth yeah. of lore maybe. Mm. Um, and it was kind of funky, but not distracting, you know. Um, but I think we are in an era of Star Wars now where there is long term plot lines that are occurring yeah. where, where I think Dave is thinking big picture, whereas, you know, in the past, Disney has failed miserably. No, ex- exactly. I think they're 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 clearly heading in the right direction. Yeah. And I, I think that this is going to spin into a massive set of prequel TV shows that that focus on the Sith. Hmm. I have a dude. Sorry, I would I love have a that feeling that's going to happen in like that needs to happen. Dude, man. Like Sith lore is, is key in star Wars and so underrepresented dude. It's, you know, it's going to be great is we're going to be like 40 and, and it's, Bane and it's is going to come be, out. It's going to be 40 and it's going to be like acolyte season four episode uh, season yeah. three or something like that. And it's going to be like a young cast at Palpatine and you and I are going to be a couple 40 year olds. I like, know we're going to have like six kids between the two of our families. And we're just, <laughs> just gonna completely. Like, Bro, yeah. Darth is <laughs> yeah. Dumb. By then we're just going to be completely <laughs> irrelevant. No one's going to know what two sons is, but we're still going to run the pod. And hey, we'll, uh, we'll be running it. If it's the same damn audience, we have too much fun doing this, dude. Uh, no, but I like talking in the future, man, that when they finally give us something related to like Bane, and I'm talking hardcore Bane, oh, it's going to be so cool. Bane is canon, Tenebrous is canon, Plagueis is canon. There's Dude, no the reason that, why they wouldn't dive in. The way that, that we, Bane shows up in canon, though, it's it's Rebels at this point, right? Or is yeah, it, it's it was at end of Clone Wars? It's on the planet remember. Moribond. <laughs> I know. But to me, that doesn't even look like Bane, how he's he's like armored. Yeah, you and know? he's not like being strong. He's like kind of yeah, wild. But you got to be careful with the the, co- the those comic booky shows because they're or not uh, the cartoony well, shows. Well, yeah, like, you're right. Yeah. Even Darth Vader looks pretty yeah. odd. Everyone and, looks and even weird. Rebels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, how about we talk about Kalnaka, right? Let's you do down it. for that? Yeah. Let's am do I it. am I jumping ahead too much? Do you have any other shot? Do you have any other before we go? Do you have any other thoughts on the Virgins at all? No, mm. I'm so, I'm totally no. Okay, mm. so we're accepting the Virgins as something that's kind of vague as just in a, good a, way, a nexus of force power that could be from the Force, that could be from the Mortis gods, it could yeah. be from the Sith, it could be from Who anything, knows? but basically we're calling it a concentration of force energy that has the power to create life. And it seems like the witches might have stumbled upon it somehow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Either stumbled upon it or were led there by the Sith or were helped by the Sith. We don't know. Yeah. We have no other details. We're not going to go any further into it. That's just kind of what we interpreted that as. And, yeah. and like we said, Virgins was specifically mentioned multiple times in The Phantom Menace. Yes, as a that's a good pickup, dude. That's, good. A specific that's a really good pickup. Dynamic. So, you kept that Kel-Naka. to yourself. Kelnaka. So again, people are complaining. They're like, Kelnaka is wasted. You know, it's the first like live action Wookiee that we've seen in a really long time. Mm-hmm. It's the first live action Jedi Wookiee. And he's just completely wasted all the stuff. You know, you see it all over social media. To me, seeing a possessed Wookiee fight two Jedi is not wasted at any capacity at all. I, I totally forgot dope. about seeing that in the trailer. Do you remember? I, I saw that in one of the trailers. Oh, really? Like, I saw Kel Naka fighting with a lightsaber. Oh, yeah. We thought and it was like, like a training exercise and, like, or yeah, something, Yeah, we thought right? it was like a training exercise. Yeah, yeah. And I was, I was confused because I didn't know what any of it meant. And I, I, I can understand now that it probably came from the higher levels of the production staff. Like, hey, we need to drop this in the trailer. Like, yeah. Wookiee and- holding a lightsaber. Gotta happen. But like, yeah. The the coolest part about it to me was when he started fighting hand to hand. Yes. Mm-hmm. It was really cool. I thought it was really cool too when uh, Torben was about to get sliced in two and then he saved himself. Torben's combat scenes were cool. Torben knows how to fight. Mm-hmm. Like he took on a bunch of witches and mm-hmm. and a possessed Wookiee. Like, shout, that was pretty dope. Shout out Tom and Baratheon, first of his name. Uh, <laughs> he uh, that I one of the things one of the things that uh, was cool about the Kelnaka piece too is I thought about uh, Han Solo and was it C-3PO? Yeah, C-3PO is playing the board game on the Millennium Falcon with, uh, uh, with or is it R2? I think it might be R2. I can't remember. Oh, R2 I think is R2 playing is playing in the C-3PO Chewbacca. is like watching him and like and like uh, R- R2-D2 like uh, accuses him of cheating or something or something like that I think happens. He, I think, no, he, oh, he makes I think a move. He, he makes he a move like, on Yeah, he makes a move Chewbacca. and he like, yeah. he like does some damage to Chewbacca within the game and then Han Solo goes like, I'll warn you, like the Wookiees have been known to pull people's arms off when they lose or something yeah. like that. And like that's the thing is like 
when you think of Wookiee Jedi, it's like if he's fighting with a lightsaber, he's doing you a favor. Because <laughs> like, it's like <laughs> as no, soon as totally he gets right. his hands on you, he's just start. And like there were some cool <laughs> yeah. scenes of him just yeah. throwing Torben and Soul around like ragdolls. Right. Yeah, and then we get to learn why Torben had a bad eye. Yeah, and it was because of Kalnaka. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we get to understand why he took the brash vows because yeah, because uh, he's he kind of a big idiot. As good of a fighter, I'm invading the fortress by myself because <laughs> I, I want to go home. <laughs> I know it's like, dude, relax, please. And then uh, we've got to talk about how powerful Andara is. Essentially, dude, she she overpowered a cool what a dozen or more witches that were all in a trance together, mm-hmm. and either she killed them, which I don't think she did, or she just completely incapacitated them. And then later on, they probably died, died from due to yeah yeah mm-hmm. like that. I I interpreted them as dead, uh, like as a result of the asphyxiation from yeah. passing out. But like that was a cool scene because like soul soul and, and, and like we talked about it early in the show. Shout out Carrie Ann Moss too, the legend from the Matrix. But she she brings like a certain aura of authority. Mm-hmm. It's just in her countenance as a human being. It's like such a cool thing, and like she. She brought it early on, and Luke and I were talking as we were watching early. We're like, she's clearly the one in charge. Yeah, you know what I mean. And like, she she, she wasn't collecting moss. Let's yeah, just say yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, yeah, she was telling the other people to collect. Moss. <laughs> exactly. So, so, but she, uh, yeah. So Sol and and Torben are looking like they're completely lost in this conflict with Kalnaka, and Indara just comes in and just takes command of the situation. And like, I interpreted it just like you did. It was almost like her consciousness confronted the collective consciousness of this coven and overpowered them so much right. that she was able to literally send them into <laughs> unconsciousness yeah. so that they would die. It was incredible. Yeah, it was a crazy, It was really it was, cool it was stuff. Crazy. It was yeah. cool. It was dope. It, a, lot, a lot of good Star Wars content, I'd say, this week. Um, let's see. The I'm just checking the notes here. Uh, yeah, the Jedi not being as predatory as you thought, like we mentioned earlier. Like they, it, it, it was kind of like a misunderstanding in a lot of ways. Mm. Right. Um, I, I thought it was cool that the council stepped in and basically said no. They were being smart. Yeah. About it turns the whole out that thing. was a great choice by the council. Um, I yeah I agree with your mention of May in the sense that she wasn't actually trying to start the fire. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, man. I think that's, that's the big stuff. I'm excited for the finale. Yeah. I'm dude. sad that it's over. Like uh, Elena and I were were walking our dog Lola. Uh, I think it was last night, and she's <laughs> she was like how many more episodes for house of the dragon is there? Cause she was like, this sucks. You know, like my, my husband's being stole, st- stolen mm-hmm. for, for house of the dragon. And she's like, well, how many episodes are there for acolyte? And I was like, there's literally only one more yeah, there's after one more. this week. Now, house of the dragon were through episode five. I think it's four or five. I think it's five, but there's still five. I think yeah. there's, I think there's, a, I think there's eight in the season. So I think there's three more still. So yeah, we have we've got time. some time. And then Lord, uh, Lord of the Rings starts late August. So that's, yeah, I'm that's stoked. right around the corner. All right, guys, that's all we have for today. Luke and I are about to record an episode on the House of the Dragon episode, so that'll be uploaded. I'll probably just upload them both tonight because I, I, th- I think they both need to get out. But uh, keep an eye on the feeds for that. As always, we sincerely appreciate you guys for supporting us, and we'll see you shortly. Thanks a lot.